cocks, like black men really? cocks, and getting these text messages. So, and then if you type in um, Wall Street Journal, it comes up the full 67 page, like the court document. Okay, report. let me look it up right now. Here we go. Here we go. Is uh, I see ARCs are not ready yet, so um, it's a little early, but we'll be all ready. right there. Let me look it up on Google. <clears throat> Vince McMahon document. Whoa, let's wait for Earl. I mean, um, ARC. Okay. Nah, he's getting it ready, bro. He's getting it ready, I see. So, right, I'm ready. Cool. Yeah, he is. Okay. What's it? Vince McMahon, Wall Street Journal. Yeah. And when you click okay. on the Wall Street Journal, it should come up the full. Wall Street Journal. Are you good? I got to read this. Because I know you sent me some of them right here. Some yeah, of the things that you have. That's the text. That's actually text between Vince and the woman. And then that Wall Street Journal is all the court documents. You know what I'm saying? All right, Terry. Gotcha. All right, there. So uh, now I hope I don't have to uh, go through all this. You know, notifications block, blah, 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 and all that bullshit. Because it ends here. You know, subscribe now to the Wall Street Journal, blah, blah all that bullshit. <laughs> Because here's how it's here's how it is right now, folks. You may not be able to see it, but it ends here, but lured her into it, then it fades out, then it has this Wall Street Journal. Continue to read it with your um, subscription. I hate when they do that. I'm gonna look up where I can get the whole thing. All right, there. In the meantime, YR has uh, sent me a few um, some of the texts between uh, McMahon and this Janelle Grant lady and of course yo know, um everybody knows what's going on with Vinny whack as i prefer to call him with the bullshit that he was uh doing to what this lady you? and to other other women as well <laughs> Vinny mac Vinny mac well that's what he used to call himself during the uh the attitude era but like a little nickname i prefer to call him Vinnie Whack, because when you think about all the ideas that he was coming up with for the past few years up until his resignation, it just really seeded bullshit. All right, so Brown, um, if you type in Wall Street Journal, Vince okay. McMahon court documents PDF. Okay. Whoa. Right, me... it should come up. It should come up this on the Google thing. He's number okay, there. Eight, eight Give number. me a few minutes. I'm going to try this on my computer. Why don't you just send them the link on Skype? I can't. There's no PDF link on that. Oh, really? But here, there here is, here is the, uh, what you'll see when you type that in Google. And then you click on it. The case number. PDF, right? So, yeah. Wall Street Journal. Mm -hmm. Vince McMahon Court Documents PDF. Okay. Okay. You know, I watched, um, obviously, the Eric Bischoff. Thing. You know, I'm not, it's crazy. All these wrestlers from, the from you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I mean, everyone yep. has a podcast now, right? So, Absolutely. Oh, really? Everybody. Everybody, who I mean, even uh, Renee Dupree, remember? Um, yeah. Um, Yep. Have you seen Maven's podcast yet or not? I don't think I'm he's not... talking about the situation, has he yet? Or but I don't know yet, but I know channel. he has a YouTube on, channel. Bro. Yeah, he oh, seems kind of queer. It. He's kind of like a queer to me. I, I don't. I'm not into that. How, so. bro? What? He's just. I don't know. His lips are the same color as his skin. It's weird. It's like. <laughs> have you seen that? It's like he does. <laughs> it's not about his it's like looks. It's about the content that he's giving out. He has no eyebrows, or they're really thin, like they're drawn. It's weird. He's explained that numerous times he suffered a concussion where he had to go through an MRI and he lost his eyebrows. That's why he can't grow any facial hair. Uh, yeah, that's what grows. Well, you're what you're a scumbag, dude. Oh, my God. Dang, MRI, all thin, whatever. So. You're a scumbag. <laughs> um... Okay, so the Eric Bischoff thing, Brown. Mm -hmm. Did you find that? or I'm looking for it right now. I got it right on my phone. All right, so there's a lot, right? It's a lot, but... It is a lot. 
it's, 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 it's real, and, uh, you know, just... and, and no one's talked about this yet. I mean, there's like a, all of these wrestlers mm. podcasts. They all are like agreeing, yeah, man. You know, no vent. Oh, you know, wow. all of that. Yes, the I end see. Of the, it's an end of an era, basically, is what Jeff Jarrett said on that. Um, Ooh, I feel boy, like Vince might. Man. Uh, who's to say Vince might show up at AEW and then Tony Khan shows up in WWE? I mean, we don't know, you know? Even though both wrestlers from both companies often been doing that. I mean, Tony Storm's back with the WWE. I mean, if Vince says he, he, he's going to fight, blah, 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 then having a bunch of money is one thing, but I mean, look at the Enzo situation. Look what that turned out to be. Enzo Amore, oh. you know what I'm saying? So, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what up? If you could yeah. be on one promotion, any promotion that has ever existed at their peak, which one would it be? At this point, with my now, don't think about it in the longevity. Think about it in its peak. It's one it's though, round. Only one round. I would have to be with uh, TNA. What? Wow. Because I, I mean, when you think about it, my discredit with the WWE. And right now, AEW is not doing so well. I think at this point, it's best to go with TNA wrestling. Oh, I'm surprised with that. But see, it's because you're thinking about it now. I'm asking you ever, like, in its peak. Oh, I like know, I know. Yeah, I know, I know back then, you know, the WWF as it was. Jesus Yo, Brown, God. TNA was popular, like, in the 2000s. So I do speak what? Brown now. That. You know I, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they had a lot of people. They had a lot of. They had Sting, Hogan, Savage at one point. They had uh, Flair. They had uh, the Dudley Boys. They had everybody. I Girl, never I, got into that too. Like I stuck with WWE, but like I should have got. I honestly thought that. you would have said something like NWA or something. You know, I feel uh, more like an NWA. Well, guy. the NWA is kind of like on the mm, level right now. It's at peace because they lost major their some of their stars. I mean, Nick no, Aldis, the I national mean, treasure, right, he left and to become the WWE general no. manager for SmackDown. Yo, you know, yo. Zero, you know why I tried to speak. FD, you're taking it way too far, brother. Whoa. What? Bro, could never. I I turned it on like Spike TV or whatever channel that was on, right? And TV, yes. yeah, I saw Sting on there. I saw Hogan, but problem so with wrestling. Like Fifty years old. Hello. The problem with wrestling is if you, it's difficult to get into if you just start watching in the middle of a storyline and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, anyway, so I never got into TNA. Yeah, I watched it like every now and then casually. But I was always WWE Brown. You know, I, I mean, WCW yes. was my first, right? Five, six years old, WCW. I, you know, I was watching WCW first. And then YR. I got into, obviously, YR. WWF. Can you mute me real quick because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a lot of noise. Saw in a damn tree down in the middle of a show. Come on, man. Try, guys try to make a bench. Oh, dude. <laughs> Where's Arknolia? It's six o'clock right now. The guy's not even here. We're gonna add him in here right now. Normally a Yeah, go right people. ahead there, cause um, he mentioned something about Vince being like this for ages. You may remember back in uh, the eighties when. Um, Thank you. You may remember when they had their first female referee. She was known as Rita Marie. She refereed. She refereed a few matches. You know, one of them being Dom Rocco against this uh, particular opponent, probably a jobber. She would have been the Aubrey Edwards of her time. But after a few weeks I, or a few months, she disappeared. And she claimed in a lawsuit towards McMahon that he uh, apparently called her over to his office, slammed the door, tried to take advantage of her. Brown, I, re re I remember. Go ahead. Uh, Brown or Ark or SC. Say well, before it. anything, can we greet Ark? Good, uh, good afternoon. What's good up, evening. Ark? You there, dude? Hello. Hello, man. How's here? it hanging, man? Or not? We're talking. We're talking about the, of course, Vince McMahon situation here, and no, it's uh, not looking good for the guy. Definitely for sure. All right. And so mm -hmm. when. 
uh, this question for all three of you guys. Say it's 20, 30 years ago, right? Y'all are working. Some chick comes up to you, and she grabs your crotch, and you get a hard on, and you know y'all do things, whatever, blah blah blah. Would y'all ever? Would y'all ever do something like that with a, a female worker type deal? No, kind of like, no, you know no, because um, oh, yeah, you're you're the boss. You're the boss of a guitar store, Doctor Brown. Let's just yeah. say that. And a uh, girl comes in, not even a, not even um, a worker. She's a customer. She comes in, says, "Hey, you know, I'll let you fuck me in the ass, my mouth, everything, Doctor Brown. Let me have a spa day. Pay for my spa day, and get me, you know, these little breath implants thing. And you can play with them all you want, Brown. Would you do that, please? No, because it's just not right." This woman, because most likely in the future, she will probably use that against you when she files a lawsuit against you. There are women out there who will purposely do that shit so they could get something from you in the long run. Ask right, so Trevor Barrow about that. My side of the story, um, I'm not going to say where I used to work when my first job, but um, I was working, right? I was working. And then the girl comes and she's like, she was also my coworker. She comes and she's like, hey, like, so what do you prefer? It sits her ass. And I'm like, um, honestly, I, I prefer a nice butt. And she was like, all right, so do you want to squeeze my butt? And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. And she kept insisting. And, and I didn't go for it, right? I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. good. She got my hand and she made me go inside her pants and start rubbing her butt. Really? She was like, feel it. This is what a real woman butt feels like. And I'm like, whoa. Wait, wait. Were, you, were, you ten really? and she, were you 10 and she was 9? Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh, she was much dude. older than me. I well, now, real like, quick, cause there's a... Tell... Oh, uh, can tell I finish my story? God, no, 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 damn, no. We're going to go there. We're going to deviate into that no, situation. No, no. We're doing a... Let we're doing that she finish his story because oh, there's more God. to this. I mean, we need to throw this in there because SC, can you tell Brown and Ark about the whole Dark Knight deal with Dark you know, Knight? Yes, I'm gonna segue right into that after <laughs> this. <laughs> so, Dark so Knight. So after she uh-huh. made me um, get her hand, no, she grabbed my hand and then she started started making me rub her uh, her butt. Right? I'm like, damn, like wow, like Jesus Christ, like you have a big butt. So then she was like, all right, look. And she unbuttoned her shirt, and then she made me. She grabbed both of my hands, and then made me squeeze her tits. And she's like, "How about this?" And I'm like, "Yo, you are fucking crazy, bro. We are at work, and you like, what is going on, bro? What are you doing, and wrapping whoppers up, or what? What was that? Were you wrapping whoppers up and putting ketchup in bags, or what? what were <laughs> no, no, I've never worked in the fast food. I'll say that I've never worked in the fast food." Um, I'm like, wow, bro. But segueing into that, um, Earl, Ari, yep. uh, we have a fellow somebody here in this community. His name is Dork Knight. Mm-hmm. Um, long story short, he was giving his story how he was 10 and the girl was, no, he was nine. And it, it sounds so weird even saying it, R.Y. I feel so uncomfortable saying it. No, don't do it. Don't go ahead, lay it on. Whoop! He's not just some guy in the community. He's a full-fledged co-host on the Joe Cronin show. Monetize this and all his wrestling shows. So he's a big deal. Go ahead. All right. He was he was nine and she was ten, right? And it sounds so weird saying that, you know. But he claimed that he he did it with her at that age. Hmm. Did the dirty. Um, what was that? Did the dirty. Yes. Mm. Dr. Brown, you used to have sex as a kid with kids or? No. Oh, my God. No, you, you know I would never do that. Right. No, I mentioned, you, you mentioned that because I remember reading in the Detroit Free Press years ago about two 11-year-old kids doing that with one another. A boy and a girl, they did that at that age. And they were Jeez. 11 years old. Well... Dark Dork Knight told a story on the show last night. Everyone got a big kick out of it. I mean, everyone was shocked, but it, you know, uh, 
but we'll quick the Vince McMahon deal. Now, I, now I know Ark. It's, it's like some things you ship, but no, other things you what? don't. Let why I speak, SC. Time to get into this. You want to talk about the story now? You just want to deviate from it? The fuck? We're done with the Dork Knight stuff. No one knows who he is over here, so. <laughs> I've uh, heard of the guy myself just now. Ark. He's actually live Ark, right now. Ark, are you the type that you don't even watch wrestling as it is now? But do you watch, like, WrestleMania? Do you watch any of the big stuff or no? No, I don't watch anything. You're not going to try to watch the, the big one this year? It's supposed to be, supposed to be big, man. Well, I might see Bill Clips on YouTube, but I don't, on, I'm so not going to watch it. You don't have uh, Pete ready, brother? <laughs> B- he got BR. You it's five BR in the chat. Ronald, if you could do us a huge favor, bro, because our Y and I have been blocked from the Dork Knights channel from being in the chat. Could you please go to his channel and to the chat? He's live right now. The Dork Knight. He's live right now. If you could put uh, put Entertainment Channel 360 is requesting your appearance we need to speak with you or something like that if you could please do that for us anybody in the chat all of you guys you guys can that'd be amazing we need to speak with this guy thank you all right there thank you br he's gonna thank you brother I'm seeing what this guy yeah, now. Is, this guy looks yeah, like. Can you um, guys keep reading it? What up? We're still here, right? We're still here. Yes, we are. All right, Brown. Did you want to read those text messages first? All right, there. Let me read. Let me uh set it up here so I could read. Let me uh, get things up here. Ark. What we looked up is Wall Street Journal put out the full court document there's like 60, 60 pages 67 all together we're going to try to get through as much as we can because there's bits and pieces out there already like vince had the dildo collection like uh payment i guess you know, rumors of payments or whatever but let's see what we can grab out of these court documents and determine which so i'm going to no- read you i'm going to reach up a few of them here okay let me give uh number six start with number 16 given mcmahon's Omnipotent. Omnipotent. As, um, what's that word again? Omnipotent. Thank you. Position in WWE. Corrosion. What was it? Chorus and what's that word? C O C R. Remember, these are words I've not even heard of until now. We well, only spelled part of it. I can't help you with that. Okay, it is a C O C R C I N I. O N. Hmm. Okay, we'll just say position for now was inherited in his increasingly depraved sexual demands. Specifically, while McMahon was CEO of WWE and Mrs. Grant was employed as an entry level coordinator in the legal department, McMahon recruited individuals to have sexual relations with Miss Grant and slash or of the two of them directed Miss Grant to visit defendant John Laurinaitis aka Johnny Ace prior to the start of work days for sexual encounters and expected and directed Miss Grant to engage in sexual activity at the WWE headquarters, even uh, during working Tower hours. The new headquarters. What's up? Is that is that Titan Towers or the new headquarters? You think? I think I'm not. You know, I haven't heard of the name Titan Towers in ages, but I guess it's um listed here as just WWE headquarters. Neither, nevertheless. Wow. Yeah. At this time, McMahon ordered Miss Grant to keep their relationship secret, in parentheses said otherwise instructed, including lying to maintain whatever cover stories he fabricated. 
McMahon insurances that Miss Grant was safe and independent rang hollow in high in the light of his efforts to isolate her from friends and attempts to chip away at her identity until it was replaced with his desire role for his for her as his bitch air quotes his fantasy and or her porn star like a personal he, ex star he exercised complete ownership and control over both her personal and her professional lives. McMahon also subjected Miss Gred to acts of extreme cruelty and degradation that caused Miss Gred to disassociate and become very numb to reality in order to survive the horrific what is she, is, encounters. Does she have like autism or, you know, no disrespect to anyone, or does she have like deficiency? Is she retarded? Or she like, why I can't- I do not know myself. I don't, like I said, I've only heard of this woman's name for the past couple of days. How can an adult woman be quote unquote controlled? Did McMahon have her locked up in chains in the back office somewhere? Like, come on, man, like this is, and Ark, I don't want to disrespect you because you're on her side on this, right? You don't, you're disgusted with missing a man's actions and all that, like you believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm not saying I believe, I'm not saying I don't believe at this point. I'm just saying we saw this with Enzo Amore. He got super canceled and then it came out and nothing happened. Yes, yep. there's court documents. Yes, the they came and raised. Let's not forget the uh, accusation against Jerry D. King Lawyer back in 1993. Some girl claimed that, that Lawyer took advantage of her when it turned out that all that was made up by the girl for her to seek attention. But Lawyer was let go briefly because of that. And let's not forget Pat Patterson, their first ever Intercontinental Champion. He was uh, taking advantage of some of the ring boys sexually. He was fired, but he was brought back in. But they kept all that under wraps in order to protect the company. Of course, that was back in 1992 when it was a bad thing to come out of the closet. And let's not forget the Rita Marie situation that I mentioned prior to Ark joining the show. Okay, here's more. <clears throat> McMahon also subjected Miss Grant to acts of extreme cruelty. Oh, yeah, here yeah, I already read that. As one example of McMahon's extreme depravity, on May 9, 2020, he, def he defecated on Miss Grant during a threesome. Oh, shit. And then commanded her to continue pleasuring his friend with feces in her hair and running down her back while McMahon went to the bathroom to uh, hmm, probably wash himself, most likely. Here's a continuation. I got the other page here. Let me, um... <clears throat> okay. What happened to R.Y.? I don't know. A lot of stuff. Here. Okay. Okay, to shower off. Upon his return from the bathroom, McMahon and his friend actively resumed the activities, the threesome, which lasted over an hour and a half. While Mrs. Grant remained, co remained covered in the McMahon's feces in the filth, when McMahon's friend left, ordered her to stay and continue to sexually take advantage of sexually gratify him in june of 2021 mcmahon and defendant laurinitis sexually assaulted miss grant inside the, the office of laurinitis at wwe headquarters while colleagues were busy at their desk behind a locked door the two men cornered her pulled her in between them forcibly touched her 
before ultimately putting her on top of a table in between them. She begged them to stop, but they forced themselves upon her. Each All took right. turns, restraining her from take- one to the other. All right, let's take turns. Brown, have a rest on the voice. And mark your spot. Mm-hmm. Um, SC Steve, do you want to read some of the text messages? Um, I want to read the 10 bullet points real quick. Go All right, ahead. yeah, read that's a good one. He uh, so yes. SC has his ten bullet points of what uh, <laughs> of what's in the report. Is that what that is, SC? What did Porky Pig join us? SC is it ten points? Is it ten bullet will, points in the report? I will give um, credit where credit is due. This is, article is from TheMirror.com, and the title reads: Ten Bombshell Claims." from Vince McMahon court document defecation, rape threat, and Texas. Mm. We're going to start off with bullet number one. Again, shout out to the mirror.com. Number one, increasing lack of boundaries. Grant, which is the female, alleges McMahon dangled career making and life changing promises in front of her. And in several meetings, he greeted her in his underwear as well as allegedly her and repeat oh as well as allegedly touching her and repeatedly asking for hugs Mm. mcmahon it is claimed also extensively shared intimate details of his personal life bullet number two mcmahon shared videos with other men the plaintiff the plaintiff alleges march 2020 mcmahon began sharing sexually explicit images (coughs) and videos of her including with WWE production staff and a world-famous athlete and former UFC heavyweight champion with whom WWE has actively trying to sign a new contract. Bullet number three, defecation incident showed extreme depravity. Depravity. Yes, depravity. Thank you, uh, Mark. Grant alleges McMahon defecated on her during a threesome on May 9, 2020, and commanded her to continue pleasuring the other man while McMahon took a shower before returning. Grant says she had feces in her hair and running down her back. Grant claims the encounter lasted more than 90 minutes while she remained covered in McMahon's filth. Text messages. The court documents include screenshots of image of images and alleged uh, images allegedly sent to McMahon. Oh my God! The court documents include screenshots of images allegedly sent from McMahon to Grant on May 11, 2020. A long message message appears to show McMahon playing out a fantasy, writing about the prospect of group sex with Grant and other men while she is tied up. The message mm. continues. The next morning. You'll be a little sore, but you're still going to want more. A subsequent Ooh. message appears to show McMahon dragging, oh, bragging about his his encounters with Grant and Ooh. sharing explicit content with WWE crew members while also urging her to fulfill his fantasy with 12 other men. Number five, wow. no means yes. The plaintiff alleges McMahon and former WWE head of talent uh, relations Laurenitis sexually assaulted her in Laurenitis' office at WWE headquarters in Stranford, Connecticut. According to, her doc- according to court documents, the office door was locked and two men cornered her and pulled her in between them, forcibly touching her. Grant says she begged them to stop, but they forced themselves on her. Claiming McMahon and Laurinaitis took turns restraining her and said, no means yes, take it, bitch. Mm. You want me to pause there and the next five we'll do later? Let me read this here. Yeah. Unsurpri- unsurprisingly, others at the WWE knew what was going on, but instead of uh, converting, intervening to prevent, mis- to protect her, 
remember this. I had to zoom in on the um, documents myself there in order to read it. I have to go like this here because the pages are way small. But apparently, employees knew of what was going on. But instead of intervening to protect Ms. Grant, WWE actively sought to conceal the wrongdoing. So they are trying to keep it a secret. And here's something else. In January of 2022, McMahon told Ms. Grant that his wife had found out about their little affair or relationship, reportedly to avoid divorce, negative publicity, and other repercussions. McMahon said that Miss Grant's time at WWE was at an end, but that he wanted her to sign a non-disclosure agreement, NDA for short, to ensure her silence on, among other things, his personal misconduct. So basically, um, she had to sign some sort of a piece of paper stating that she would not reveal this or that. And I guess uh, she received a whole bunch of money, I guess. Kind of like that hush-hush deal that we heard about back in 2022. And I'm, if I'm correct, this is the same case that the board of directors at WWE were looking into at that time. All right. In the days ahead, McMahon put Miss Grant under immerse pressure to sign, saying that refusing would not only jeopardize McMahon, his family, and the company, but that she sterely become a public headline staffer retributional room i guess that's how it's pronounced including from the pornographic content mcmahon had captured and face mcmahon's legal resources conversely mcmahon assured her that her signature would ensure his continued support and protection and safeguard her from her basically trying to protect her reputation. Ultimately, Miss Grant seconded to the pressure and signed the agreement for exchange for payments, which Miss Vince McMahon later stopped making. Hey. See, I, I didn't know that all of this happened in 2020. Well, you remember uh, there was a, this was brought up around that year for this forced mcmahon to resign for the wwe you may remember wwe president nick khan no relation to tony and stephanie mcmahon his daughter they decided to take over the company as co-ceos triple h yeah. stephanie's husband was later brought back into the company fold as he had a creative and then, of course, McMahon briefly came back with the TKO deal, you know, merging with uh, UFC under this Endeavor name and TKO. But I also remember reading that TKO's it's stock Banner. was down for a while because Banner McMahon Brown. was still involved. Brown, it's a Banner, brother. Mm -hmm. I see. What? Well, I was explaining is he, is that. Is he on camera? Because I don't see him. <laughs> Why are? Brown was a ban. It was a banner, brother. You know. Banner. Okay, that's the correct pronunciation for it. Yeah. Alabama. Correct word for it. But either way, McMahon was still briefly involved with the board of directors and such with TKO, and that was one of the big reasons why TKO's stock was going down because of McMahon still being involved. So I can fit to say that McMahon has been bad news for quite some time. Well, actually, for the past how many years since the uh, PG era started, many people were complaining about the content and the uh, storylines being boring as hell. We should probably get Joe Cronin uh, on this as well here, if he's available. Hey, can we all add Sean's view on the call? Oh, that better yet. 
Good idea. Let's. Uh, but you are. You got that connection, Brown. You always. Let me see if I could get the guy on. Let me look him up if he's available because I don't think um, Joe is. Uh, I think he's quite busy with this stuff there. Let me look on the uh, line here. Blah, blah, blah. There he is. All right, let's do this. I'm going to add Sean to the mix here. Hope he, he he'll be ready. No, I just tried calling him. It didn't go through. All okay, right, there. Well, we'll have to it's wait and see problem. there. Who knows? Yeah, he's unavailable, unfortunately, there. Well, so let's see if we can get Joe Cronin on the call here to get his. Um, I know he did a lot of shows about this. How about we get the next back sting? Prince. Prince. He's here right now. Prince, you there, man? And he left, unfortunately. What the? He, only, he popped in for about a couple of seconds and then boom, he was gone. Prince, join back. Getty to Lee. Getty Lee's nose. Hmm. Damn. So, and you know what I noticed? We have yet to hear any word or statement from Linda, Shane, or Stephanie. And of course, um, there was some comments made by Triple H in a sh the YouTube short, but that was later removed. What I know. Say? But uh, I don't know. The, the, I wanted to find out myself, but like I stated, the short was removed by the uploader. Mm. So I guess at this time, um, WWE um, executives are told to keep their mouth shut. For I understand. I mean, I don't blame them, dude. I don't yeah. Blame them. Oh, and bro, the thing I want to know. Forbid, God forbid ahead. that McMahon passes away, right? Let's say in a year from now he passes mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Do you think he's gonna get this big sayonara tribute, or I'm like, oh, rest in peace. All right, moving on. Or do you think they're not even gonna bring it up? Hmm. All depends on the outcome of this whole matter. It's that you know what I actually have to say that that's a tough call to be honest with you because I mean like take a look at another name that got degra that degraded himself Bill Cosby America's favorite dad a great entertainment icon little did we know that uh, he was uh, doing all these things to these uh, multiple women I mean when all that was revealed his reputation all the decades of work. That he had done just went right down the crapper. It was all tarnished, all the crap. Nowadays, hardly anybody sings or talks praise about the guy. And I'm thinking it's going to be the same that thing with this. Come up from you guys in a couple years from now. What's up? Are you guys afraid that maybe a couple years from now something's going to pop up from you guys? Mm -mm. No, I doubt it. Art? Mm -mm. You sure? Yep. We're sure. We're sure of that. I don't know about Ark. The whole. Mm -mm. My teacher always taught me when uh, when a student goes mm -mm, that means uh huh. Really? Yep. Mm. And you did it again. I don't know. No, that, no, that was. Mm. And he did it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Ark, got some explaining to do. Not really. Let's get to the bottom of this real quick. Ark, you got some skeletons in your closet there, brother? Mm -mm. Why oh, did I did again? it again. <laughs> there, I said it for you. Well, you got, well, you got to remember, some people can be creatures of habit when it comes to using words and phrases. Oh, no. I just said it to him and he did it again. <laughs> did you want it's a different right, answer? It's okay, mm -hmm. Ark. It's okay, Ark. You know, some, sometimes, you know, we just got to enjoy life. And 
When mm. the moment comes, you got to come too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, dude. So, I'm trying to... Let me see if I can add Prince. Extra large arc. You know what I mean? Where mm. is Prince Idol? Arc is now called Extra Large Shark. <laughs> Where's Prince at? Mark, you got some splaining to do. Where is Prince? Mm. For crying out loud. Prince Chad, Heidi, you, you joined the call for crying out loud, and now you're gone. Let me see what the chat thinks, Ark. The chat is going ape shit, bro. The chat is laughing their ass off. Ark, you got some splaining to do. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't buy it, Ark. Come on, SC. Jesus Christ. What? All right, can you read the text, please? Or yeah, read <laughs> can more, you please. Actually show up in your fucking channel. Mm -hmm. Well, people got to step away for a couple of seconds anymore because you barely show up in your own channel. Prince Ido, well answer the call, man. We're trying to add you to the call. All right, let me go ahead and read the next uh, bullet points here. Go ahead. All right. Again, shout out to the mirror.com. Bullet point number six. Grant told to make sexual content for WWE star. It is alleged on or around the July 12, 2021, McMahon ordered Grant to create personalized sexual content for an unnamed WWE superstar. What? After after sharing the photos, McMahon allegedly said that the wrestler, quote, likes what he sees, end quote. Around two weeks later, McMahon is said to have flown to the, Don, is said to have flown the superstar to Connecticut for what he told Grant was a business dinner. <laughs> Oh, Paul Three is quick. here. Is it cool? What do you think about the Vince McMahon situation, brother? All right, so I muted him real quick. Um, yeah, because I later, think he's McMahon playing. Is said to have flown to WWE, this, the WWE superstar to Connecticut for what he told Grant was a business dinner. Yes, man. Help you? Yeah, we call. What's up, chef? Extreme, extreme threats. What is your opinion, real quick, about? Uh, Vince McMahon, you think he's guilty? You think the chick's full of shit? What is your opinion on what we're talking about there right now? So, you're muted, Extreme Shaft. All right. Oh. I will say, with there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Look at Paul Three's at a gig. See that, Brown? Anyways, yeah, after see, two yes. weeks later. Around two weeks later, McMahon is said to have flown the WWE superstar to Connecticut for what he told Grant was a business dinner, but also a sexual encounter in McMahon's condo. However, the wrestler did not engage because he was too intoxicated to was too intoxicated and taken back to the plane. Number seven bullet point. Shout out again to the mirror. Grant suffered sexual injuries. The complainant detailed several sexual injuries she says were suffered from encounters with Mick McMahon, including bleeding and pain from forceful use of sex toys. Grant alleges she pleaded with McMahon to cease further sexual activity, but the number of encounters increased as did Mc McMahon's as did McMahon's physical aggression during them. McMahon was said to be most aggressive when using certain sex toys named after male WWE wrestlers and performers. It is alleged he also showed an infatuation with pretending that other men, namely certain WWE talents, were in the room with them during sexual encounters. Bullet point number eight, rape threat. In one text message, 
allegedly sent on an unspecified date. A contact named Vince is Grant's phone appeared and Grant's phone appeared to be to send a menacing threat. Quote, do not knock on the door because if I see you, I will rape you in the hallway. End of quote. Get read. Bullet point number nine. Grant succumbed. 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 May uh, can you enlighten me as to what that means? Succumbed. Can I help you guys? What does that mean? What does succumbed mean? Like succumb the word. Succumb to me. Submit to me. It's something like that form. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, thank you. So come to my depravings. Extreme chat, we're talking about the victim. Mandy, do you find him guilty? Do you find this a big money deal, money grab? Like, what's your what's Extreme Shaft's opinion on this Vince McMahon situation? First and foremost, she can't rape the willing. Um, she was a willing contestant. She got, she was paid, I believe, like almost a million dollars until he cut her off, and that's the only reason why she came out. Is that Vince cut her off? Is the understanding that I had. Well, you're. I think you're. It's. It's. It might be. I don't know. A lot of the wrestling fans just are done with McMahon, and I remember. Here's my question. Okay. Here's my question. You know, there's a bunch of dirty, raunchy porn out there. Women are doing stupid, crazy shit for money in porn. Now, what yeah. happens? Let's say six years down the road. 10 years down the road who are, are they are you going to open up for them to start suing people this woman was a whore whores get paid to fuck that's what they do prostitutes have been around for thousands and thousands of years right what do they say it's the oldest profession yeah they say that for years right so to say, I, I think he's going to end up having to pay her the full amount, and then it'll all go away. But do you think uh, his reign in the wrestling world is done for life? Oh, yeah, for sure. They destroyed him. Yeah. That's how they destroy it. They destroyed an alpha. You know, he all was right, an alpha. Any app. last words there, brother? Thank you for calling in. Any last words? It's I was, I, excuse me, but I was fucking called. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to get an opinion of different people here. So, no, Shad. he's off the call. <laughs> Why are he's kicking me out, dude? I didn't even kick him Cassie, out. Can you mute while we have callers you don't like, please? And just don't, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Dude, here we go. It's this on. So, dude, <laughs> why is this guy doing this, bro? Right, because SC. we're trying to have a conversation, SC. SC, just mute for five minutes, please. <laughs> dude, I'm the SC, host of the just, fucking channel. And this guy thinks he. Oh, you're the host? Go have a Newport 100 box, brother. All right? Um, Just take a break, SC. It's not the Fuck big of a deal. you, Shaft. No, I hate this guy, bro. Why? What did he ever do to you, mother... What did he ever do to you? <laughs> That's clown, bro. Shaft, chill, dude. Just mute for five minutes, please. Chat's not going to do what you wanted him to do, so stop telling him what to do. Chef, you do it one more time and I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is worse than what Bullfrog was going through a few times. Well, he's disrespectful to you, to you and Arknolia. I mean... Come, I mean, and if YR doesn't see it, I don't know where he... Where, where he you know, he tries to keep this guy around. But I don't this guy's... Want... This guy's constantly disrespecting Earl. Earl does nothing to nobody, and he's and he yeah. fucking treats him like a piece of shit, dude. Yeah, I did not. Uh, I will say I did not appreciate that one question. Like, do you like being brown? Now he later would say that. Do you like the name Brown? But that <laughs> question had a different meaning. Brown, no doubt about it. More, I mean, there's people in this community that like threaten people with their information and doxing. I'm not. That's not a dig at you, Sha. I'm just saying in general. There's way more. Buttheads than SC asking you. If you I've, like I've doxed nobody and I've been doxed. So, I, well, no, I'm saying there's, you know, and we don't, we don't have those people around here. We don't talk to those people, but I'm saying. And, and my beef with um, SC is he started um, talking bullshit about me and lying. 
And once he started doing that, then he's a piece of shit. So. Yeah, you need to bend the name, my brother. For real. Grow up. Because the motherfucker wouldn't talk to me if he was face to face with me like this. He doesn't I mean, like we, sitting on him know. saying, I don't want to be on the call with SC. So why does he have to do it with other people? Like, who is SC? Like, why does he have to have this ego, big head, weirdo type vibe? But yeah, like, yeah, I mean, I mean, back in the day when men picked up women, you, you always had, a, you know, you kind of took that chance, like to put your hand on her leg. <laughs> You know, that kind of thing. There was always a, you never worried about, you know, you know, your actions of courting a girl or a woman to get you into trouble. And and now look at how things are turning around on people. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Thanks to the Me Too movement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A couple of years sure. ago. That was a big one. I mean, I remember Henry, Henry Cavill. The star of Man of Steel. He said he was afraid to go on on eighty dates because of that. I mean, these women women can get is if they want to get fucked, they can get fucked. You know, men are different. Men can't always get that. You know, it's sometimes a standard thing. Sometimes people have too high of standards for who they are. Or there's other guys that'll just fuck anybody, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think Ken's told some stories about his cousin or a buddy of his that would just hammer anything when they were younger. You know, nowadays, man, shit, you get in trouble. I can come after you like this. Come on. And if it was, and, and that was exactly, he told her that he was going to cut her off once he left his job because he's not. Now he's just living off of what he has. Granted, the guy has enough money for enough, but he doesn't for ages. have. Yeah, but he doesn't have new money coming in from the WWE when he, you know, and that was his big bread and butter. And yeah, he probably could have done other things. And who knows, dude? He might. What happened if he shoots an offer at fucking um, Tony Khan to mm. buy him out? Mm. Oh, or, boy. Or a merger there where he gets involved. You got, you know, everyone says how he's he ruined the WWE. The WWE, I go, but we wouldn't be WWE wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for Vince McMahon. That is true, definitely. That is true about that. He he's the man so, behind the company. I mean, like he you realize from- he, he, well, yeah, he bought his father out, but he took when for WrestleMania one, he put his house up for. Up and pulled money out of his house, his home wow. equity, to um, finance that. Wow, I never knew that. Yeah, and it was a big hit, and boom, he made his money back plus some. Wow, I remember seeing that with my dad when it was uh, closed I, circuit TV at the uh, Cobo Arena that one. You went Sunday. down to Cobo to see it? Yes, I did. Me and my dad, 1985. I went in um, eighty. What was it? Eighty seven for WrestleMania three. I was at the. Oh, that Dome. was a big one. And that and yeah. what, this very day, if it's to say that no WrestleMania attendance top that. Yeah. No. It was you. Were, it was full, man. Yeah, you could, so, but... When you um, you had a what ninety three thousand or something. But the best match I think I've ever seen, and I used to go a lot. We used to go to the Joe and Kobo when I was a kid for the house man. You know the house shows down there we used to go all the time i one time this is when jake the snake was a heel i was 12 rows back i was probably about 12 years old and you remember cups used to be a paper cup yes with wax ab- on it yep absolutely i remember well, those I, days well i smashed my cup and this is when people were throwing shit at the ring and stuff when a heel oh, would man. come out <laughs> oh, i yeah, threw I my i threw my cup out i threw it out 12 rows back and he's up on like the second step getting into the ring. I hit him in the back of the head. Dude, I security, remember security. Listen, security tried to throw us out. It was I was with my my mom took me. And um and a friend of mine might have been with us too, but my mom was a paramedic and she worked for the company that was there that was covering the uh the event at the time. So she once she they knew who she was and stuff, then it was like, oh, okay. 
and then we were able to stay. But yeah, I used to. That, that was a nice perk to have. Mom working those um events and stuff. Wow, different you know, events. I remember. I remember one time me and my dad saw Hulk Hogan take on Greg the Hammer Valentine in an outside venue that was next to the Motor City uh, Coliseum on Eight Mile. The State Fair Coliseum it was what's yeah. called. And people were throwing the shit at Adrian Adonis when he was climbing on the top rope. And the announcer had to say straight up, if things continue to get thrown into the ring, the the show will end bing, bam, boom. So it was so on the old State stop. Fairgrounds. Yep, absolutely. I think I remember that match. I think I remember that event there. Yes, I remember. Was, the it, right... around the, was it around the State um, Fair time? Wasn't it yes, around State Fair? Right... I'm not too sure, but I remember it was the summertime, and it was for free. Yeah. Well, we used to go to the State Fair. My my brother's baseball coach was a writer for, you remember the Macomb Daily? Yes, I do. Is one it still of the, functioning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but good, it's still good. around. Yeah, good. so um, he, was a, he was one of the head writers. So he always used to have passes and shit for the State Fair, for the State Fair so we would all go. And, yeah. Nice. Dude, well, did you, was, and also ahead. one more thing, Harpo's is up for sale. Yeah, I heard about that as well. Oh, I you? think uh, yes, I read about it. My friend um uh from Facebook, uh, she posted that story. I guess uh, Roosevelt is still running the place, but it's going to be under new ownership, if I'm correct. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's um. I know the Metro Times is calling it for to get a facelift in some areas, including the bathrooms. Oh well, yeah. But the coolest, I thought the coolest thing about that place was the dance floor, the light-up oh, dance yeah. floor. Yeah, I remember that. Yes, it was like Saturday Night Fever. A lot of people yeah. were talking about that. Well, we used to go in high school for quarter, for quarter beer night on Thursdays. Thursday night was like, you know, they'd have, then, the, then they had the um, hottie competition, bitches stripping yep. on stage. Mm-hmm, yep. Remember the Thursday night? Yeah, well, but I wasn't there on Thursdays. I mostly was either on Fridays or Saturdays, mostly Saturdays. But you would have the hot legs contest, and we know what ch- chance of guys will be nope. cheering. We want Bush. We want S- Bush. Skin mm-hmm. to win. You know what, yep, absolutely. And we know what kind of Bush you're referring to at that time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the mosh pit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely there. I got I um I bro- I broke a guy's nose accidentally in the mosh pit oh. at um at the Ritz. Damn. Yeah, one time he ca- well I'm tall, you know, being six four, mm, you know so you, you know yeah, so you get you get your elbows up, you're hitting people in the head, you know. Dang. Yeah, I didn't. It was like and I felt it crunch too. I knew exactly what happened. I turned, caught him in the yeah. I wasn't trying to do it. I felt bad. I see. Damn, so you think this woman here, Janelle Grand, is trying to get a big-ass paycheck from McMahon altogether? Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, now, would you say the same thing about Bill Cosby? I mean, there was multiple women coming up that he was uh, giving them pills and their drinks, take this here, take that, and then taking advantage of them. It's like, the thing I want to know is, you know, was McMahon one of those guys that was just, you know, probably got was sexually deprived as a teenager and figured now I'm such a big shot, now it's my chance to take advantage of all the poon tang that's out there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he's you know, money talks. People. Money talks. Yeah, exactly. And the guy, man, McMahon was drawing in mega bucks, man. I mean, this is the same guy that Eric Bischoff wanted uh, his, he wanted to take over. No doubt about that. Yeah. No, but I think that the company itself is in a, in a good spot. You still got, you know, Triple H pretty much. Triple H and Nick Khan, and I guess Stephanie is going back on the board too. That's good to hear because wonder how she's been. Yeah. Do you think that CM Punk thing is at work, or do you think it's a real injury? Um, I think he's really hurt. Damn. Because of the fact that he came out and, and they came out and said something about it. Just because, you know, they, they addressed it like they did. 
And just like you got to remember, remember Cody wrestled with a torn pack. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, you know, holy so, crap! What the hell did this guy ran into a Mack truck? Yeah, his wasn't that bad though, because when they're bad, they literally rip from the sternum and they fucking curl up and they like curl up into the chest and up on high and on your chest when they tore, when they truly tear. One of the football players on the Lions. Um, he had a torn pack and was out for three and a half months. Wow. And his looks, he was bruised up like that, but there was like a knot up at the top of his chest. You never seen that, that knot on, on Cody. Man, I never saw anything like that whatsoever. I saw that. It's like, holy cow, did this guy get into a forest fire or something? Cause damn, he looked like almost burnt from the long way there. That was scary as hell. All right, so fun. You said you stated that Stephanie may be uh, coming back to the board of directors, uh, or on that board, like uh, like a position like The Rock is in. Yeah. The, the, now here's a question about The Rock. Couldn't life get more better for this guy? I mean, like when you think about it, a great wrestling career, a great movie career to boot. I mean, like, uh, he had the Little Rock series on NBC for a while. He's now part of the board of directors. I mean, like, this this man's got good luck coming his way every left and right. It's like, dang. It'll be interesting how um, his input plays out, along with Stephanie's, if she decides to come back. And where's Linda? And Shane, what did they say about all this? Because I understand McVince and Linda are poorly, according to many sources, not together. Yeah, I don't think they've been together for a while. Oh, yeah, because obviously she had enough of Vince's bullshit. And oh, Shane, you obviously. I mean, like, come on. I mean, you, you may remember Rita Marie, their first female referee back in the mid 80s. Yeah. Yeah. She was um, apparently she filed a lawsuit against McMahon saying that uh, he tried to sexually take advantage of her. And she filed a lawsuit about that. I don't know what was the outcome of that situation. I read this in a wrestling publication around that time. Yeah, I don't remember hearing about that one. All right, but. yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I remember hearing that when I first heard about any uh, sexual allegations, that situation came right back to my mind. Of course, he cannot forget the uh, Pat Patterson doing what he was doing to those ring boys, taking advantage of them. <clears throat> yeah, that. <clears throat> One second. You okay there? Yeah, I just hit a joint. Uh, um, but um, he, yeah, he got away with a lot. That guy, yeah, no, yeah, Oof. yeah, he got booted, uh, he got fired, and then later was brought back in a couple years later, if I understand. But you know, the thing is, uh, the thing is, you know, for someone that big to take advantage of someone, you know, just for a sexual uh gratifications, you know, like. This does not do the company any good. But then again, I think in the WWE's case, you know, Vince McMahon was already on the way out. Triple H is now in charge, head of creative and other things. So Nick Cotton, no relation to Tony, as I stated earlier, he's uh, in charge right now as the WWE CEO. And I'm thinking maybe Stephanie should make a comeback as a co-CEO. She was there for a while. I think she, she left when she found out her dad was going to make a comeback. And I believe she was like, you know, I love you, dad, but you done lots of damage to the business because a lot of people. Were that's why Shane. Be- that's why Shane ain't there is what I yeah, heard. He is- got, yeah, he got booted. He got fired after that uh, situation that with the Royal Rumbles by his father. He got booted. Well, well their estrangeness has come from dad's actions. So, yeah, I know exactly. You know, his actions with women is, you know, what I've heard, you know, so it's not really a mystery to the family, though, what he does. Exactly. It says, like, I'm surprised it put up for this long when you look at it. 
Well, if they're if these women are willing to do it, yeah. Like I said, if she he kept paying her, we wouldn't be hearing about it. We would have never heard about this. Yeah, no, I guess uh, the skin it to win it uh, phrase really goes far with some women. I, I mean, there are people have, out there. Go ahead. Have you guys gone through the list of all the shit that he gave We're, her? Yeah, I was reading. I know. Yeah, I, I got that. Can you find? Can we find that? I still have it on my phone. All right, yeah, I, mean, read this. I read some of it as he read some of it as well. It's Let's ridiculous. See. I mean, it's millions of dollars of shit. I know, exactly. If you add it all up. BMWs. Bouquets of flowers every other week. Mm-hmm, yeah. Trips. His condo, you know, giving, letting her use the condo. I know. Okay, here's uh, number 47. After her family passed away, Miss Grant dedicated herself to finding grateful employment. During this time, Miss Grant often ran into McMahon's two personal assistants to her building, one of them who was a former grade school uh, classmate of Miss Grant. Miss Grant's closest friend in the building was a resident manager. That individual is referred to here on as the resident ma manager. Similar to personality, Miss Grant and the resident manager bended over shares of adversity as a uh, coordinated community intensives. Or what's that word? Um, into narratives or into remember like i said i have to zoom in on these documents because the writing is way small and um it's kind of difficult when you try to read something like you gotta yeah, keep doing this so you forgive me if i'm stumbling my words but apparently you know the nick man took advantage of this woman knowing about this man has a massive sexual fetish and as i uh, <laughs> said earlier on this man was probably uh, got no poon tang as a high school kid. Probably got no poon tang in his early 20s. And now, since he's a big hot shot in this big massive company, he figures, I'm the boss now. I run the world. I run the sports entertainment spectrum. All the women will now bow to me or else. Kind of the same thing with Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. It's like there are people out there who probably, when you get into a position of power, one of the first things they're going to do is go back to what they were lacking in their earlier life and then go for it full throttle. Whether it's revenge against a group of people or a few other people out there who uh, bullied them and made fun of them. Like a, it's kind of like a kid who used to get bullied in high school for being a nerd, being a dweeb. He becomes a uh, a cop, a police officer, and one of the first things he's going to do is going to find the bullies that fucked with him in the past, and he's going to take their his revenge out onto them. We've seen it many times before in many of these uh, cop drama storylines. It's happened many times before. All right. What kind of woman is going to sit there and get sh shitted on? Or shat on, and be and and sit there for what ninety minutes with it all over her without like, I know, saying ah well, I'm gonna clean up or she liked it. Mm. I know. I I guess you know some people, people can be uh, manipulated. They could be a uh, coarse, not really coarse, but they can after a while. They could be uh, submitted into obeying this person's orders, you know, after a long period of time. Well, not really a long period or short period of time, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, it gets in them after a long while, basically. It gets in them to the point where they have to uh, either obey or else. It's kind of like in an abusive relationship with the uh, whacked out husband. And, uh, she was getting, off, she ahead. was getting, she was getting compensated. 
I know, yeah. She was getting paid loads of money, and now I guess the payments had stopped, and now she's finally coming out with this whole shinging. And don't you think that seems odd? Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's true there. I mean, like, when you, but then again. It seems very convenient. But then again, let's not forget, you know, McMahon, he's also in the bigger wrong for doing all this. Well, I mean, I mean what people if, what people do behind closed yeah. doors is is really she was, no one's no it, one's business. Got jewelry, cars, nails. Yeah. Sounds like sounds like a whore to me. You, you, wait, you know he's married. Yeah. You should have said something right away to somebody. Your job, I mean, but Doctor Brown, stop being a cuck. Please. I'm not being the cup. Mm-hmm. Being a cut, you're being a white knight for women, Brown. Come on, man. There's a look at. There's plenty of porn out there that you can go look at, and I'm sure there's shit with women getting shit on. Are those women now gonna? Oh, in ten years after their their bodies are, you know, they're postmenopausal and not not doing porn anymore because no one wants to fuck them. And um, are they gonna? What are they gonna sue the producers and stuff and everyone that made these movies because of they sh- they shat on them in the movie? Yeah, that's a point there. They a lot of them agreed to do this because of the money. It's all about money. She went. He was supposed to. All I about thought the he was supposed rules, to give, He was supposed to give her five million, and he only gave her a million. And she's like, "What's up?" Uh, and I'm gonna come out about it. That's smart. So. So what'll happen is he'll end up paying her the rest of the money, and everybody goes on with their life. Yeah. Brown, you have to understand that um, she had, she got a like, you know, you. Yeah. Go ahead. We why you wouldn't believe Vince McMahon over a stranger woman that we don't know who? Well, I wouldn't believe Vince McMahon either because you know, excuse me, we know he's been doing shit like this uh, for ages. I mean, like back to the eighties with the Marita Marie case when I first mentioned there. I mean, like it's no doubt that you know. Let's not forget the sex scandal with uh, the Ring Boy situation. I mean, like. It's no doubt about that Vince is a sexual deviant. That's for sure there. I mean, uh, no doubt he was in. Uh, but I heard, he, I heard, I heard Vince is losing his marbles. Oh, yeah. They've been saying that for ages. I mean, no, like, I mean, certain... like legitimately, clinically, he's got like the onset of Alzheimer's. That's what I heard. Oh, yeah. I would not be surprised. I mean, like so, many wrestlers get all get Alzheimer's and dementia because of the bumps they get on the head. Look at Jimmy. F- well, yeah, I mean, Fice, the, look at Perry Sanders. He's, he's seventy five years old, right? Yeah, exactly. He's in his. I mean, that shit starts end. happening. Granted, he's probably had the best of the best doctors in the world and been on the best, eating the best of the best. But time catches up with everybody. I know that's true. There, no matter how. How rich, how bulked up you are, you're gonna have that mental uh, situation there. Yeah, you know you can't, you know you can only fight that so much, really. Really. Yeah, no, I I experienced it. My mom had dementia big time. Yeah, my grandmother. Last few years. Yeah, my grandmother had Parkinson's and dementia and and Alzheimer's. Yeah, her last eight years of her life, she had to spend in a nursing home. But my grandfather was there like three times a day. He'd feed her and make sure, you know, he took care of her until she died. All the nurses, all the nurses loved him. He fed, he fed all the nurses. He'd cook at home, bring home pop, bring back pasta for everybody in the fucking nursing home. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, but that's smart, dude. So if you ever have someone that goes into a nursing home, make sure you go there a lot and take care of them and. Um, let at least let your face be seen so they they know that people are coming in and that's the ones the ones that get neglected are the ones that don't have family coming in 
I know that's a sad when that happens. I mean, like there are a lot of times I would visit my dad when he was in the hospital, my mom when she was in the hospital. You know, it's very sad. And uh, I know one thing, some of the nursing homes can do their job a little bit better in sure, terms for of sure. care for their patients. Yep. That's for sure, yeah. All right, there. So I think uh, this will uh, probably close out our episode of WrestleManiacs discussing uh, Vidi Wack, as I call him, because I know Arca, I believe, it has to go, if I'm correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Shaft, it's good having you on the call, as well as um, props to YR and SC for adding to this conversation. And I'll see you guys later on, all right? So, what, Ark, for um, our next Music Maniacs, we're discussing Black Sabbath's first album, correct? I, th- I think that's correct. Good, good. I'm all ready for that. All right, for Ark, YR, SC, Extreme Chef, and myself, we thank you, everybody, for tuning in this episode of WrestleManiacs. And um, we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, brothers. Thank you as well.